Grit to the Bitch House, my name is Kate, and today I'm going to be doing my top 10 reads of 2023. It's the end of the year, everywhere on TV, couples and Christmas trees. So I had a hard time narrowing this list down to 10 books, so technically it's 11, but I'm calling one an honourable mention. Before I get started, I will just tell you, Sherlock had a cyst on the back of his neck, which we had to get treated, um, so... That's why there's a slight like wound on the back of his neck. If you see it, he's fine now. He's on antibiotics. He's doing well. But I didn't want to not mention it in case you notice it in the video. I'm looking because he's just here, but I don't think you can actually see him. That is a loud plane. I wouldn't usually upload a top 10 of the year until the very end of the year, but I am away Christmas in England, so I will not have a video up Christmas weekend. But there should be one up for the new year for my New Year's TBR. So let's get started on my top 10 of 2023. So my honourable mention, which is technically number 11, is Percy Jackson, The Chalice of the Gods. The reason I'm including this one as like number 11 is this book wouldn't make any sense unless you'd read the original Percy Jackson series. But usually for me, when authors go back and revisit old series and old characters, I never enjoy it as much. I don't really like spin-offs of books. I don't like continuations. I normally feel like they should have just left as it was. But I absolutely love this one. So this one follows, it's like the sixth book in the original Percy series. And it follows Percy during his last year of school with his girlfriend Annabeth and his friend Grover. And he realises he needs some kind of extra credit to get into university that Annabeth is going to. And he's sent on some quests to try and fulfil this extra credit. And it's just so much fun. It's a really quick read. It feels like the original Percy Jackson series. I have such a soft spot for the original Percy Jackson series. The one I heard they were continuing it, I actually wasn't going to read it because I was worried they would ruin it or Mr. Riordan would ruin it. But um, I actually really enjoyed this one. I thought it was very well done. It was super fun. It immediately felt like being back in the world. The characters felt like exactly where you'd left them in the original series and you were just going back to visit them. I really, really enjoyed this one. But the reason it's probably not the top 10 is you, it's such a continuation of the original series, you absolutely would have had to have read it for it to make any sense, but I really, really enjoyed it. The rest of these books are in no particular order, so I'll start with the ones that I don't actually own. And the first one being Tessa Bailey's The Academy series. I love the, particularly the second one, which is called Indecent Exposure. And this follows a police academy recruit who's had a very difficult childhood and has a best friend who encourages him to join the police academy. And he has an issue with substance abuse and that he is trying to keep under wraps while at the police academy. But it is becoming increasingly difficult for him to continue working with the issues that he has. And he is out one evening in the area that he lives. I think, he, I think they live in Brooklyn. It could possibly be Queens, but I think it's Brooklyn. And he is out one evening and he runs into a girl who's in an area that he considers to be very dangerous. So he gets talking to her to find out why she's there. And it turns out she's from Ireland and she is visiting America um, sh for a short period of time. She was in the Olympics recently. She's got a break after training and she's visiting and he decides to show her around because she has a very in strong interest in true crime and he shows around the area to have a look around and they both have difficulties from their past which are very much holding them back and they talk about this and they have this one great night together. So he wakes up the next day, goes into work, finds out the girl he spent the evening with is actually his new shooting instructor and that's why she's in America and it's so good. It handles his substance abuse issues so well. It handles her previous issues including grief amazingly. I just thought for a romance novel these things were done so well and I really enjoyed it. It's definitely my favourite Tessa Bailey book I've read so far. I highly recommend that one especially if you're able to access it on audiobook. The next book is Spice and Wolf Volume 1 by Ishunu Harashuka. I believe it's pronounced. They don't have the book so I can't read it off but I think that's from my memory is the correct name. Um, and this is a light novel series from Japan. The first one follows a man who was a traveling trader and he goes town by town delivering and exchanging goods with people and his dream is to one day own a shop. And one day he is moving, this is set in like a medieval kind of setting, like a European medieval setting. And one day he is traveling from town to town and notices um, in his pile of, I think he has furs, a girl and it turns out she is actually an ancient deity who looks like a wolf. She has wolf ears and tails, but it actually presents like a female. And the people of the town are going away from her religion and belief that she represents. So she isn't being worshipped in the same way. She was very neglected. So she decides that she doesn't want to stay there anymore. She's basically going to make the travelling trader take her along on his adventures so she can see a bit more of the world and eventually end up somewhere else that their religion is stronger. And it is a story between the two of them that goes across multiple, multiple volumes of this light novel and a manga and a TV show, which they're currently remaking. Um, and I just absolutely loved it. It's, it's very funny. The uh, main character speaks in a manner which was based on... Um, ancient courtesans and it was quite studied in a particular way to make her sound like she came from the past. The way that the character speaks then makes you feel like you're very two distinct characters in the book. The man that she travels with, whose name I cannot remember, and the girl who is the wolf deity, they just speak in completely different ways. So it's very two defined characters in the book and she has very um, set ideas about things and that she should be worshipped and he just kind of has to go along with this and make his best with the way that she behaves and it's very very funny but it's also kind of sweet and there's romantic elements and there's an adventure within it and there's 
different things she does that annoy him and things that he does that annoy her and they're just it's very engaging read. I'm actually on the third volume right now but I really really enjoyed this one. I hope to continue but the first one was my favourite so far. And the last book I don't own is Tom Felton's Beyond the Wand which is autobiography and memoir about his time as childhood through doing child acting programs that eventually led him to being Malfoy in the Harry Potter series, moving on to his life after that and all of his personal relationships and kind of where his life went off the rails some. I don't read a lot of non-fiction memoirs because they can be very self-indulgent and you also feel like people never want to represent themselves in a bad way. Human beings want to be liked and loved and telling people our worst faults isn't the way that happens. That is a humongous plane. I wonder what that is. That's definitely a people carrying one. Um, isn't the way that that normally happens for us. So people don't tend to represent those things in their own memoirs and in their books. You normally just hear, these are the good things that happened to me. So his ability to explain his issues with, again, substance abuse and his time doing rehab and what he learned from the experience was absolutely amazing. I, I really love this book. I think it would be a great book for people who have loved ones who go through these similar problems because of his honesty and his experience and what he learned from the whole thing and what he's planning to do with the rest of his life. Even during the dark times of the book and some of the incredibly sad parts of the book, you still feel like he is a very real person that you could know. It's not, there's no pretense and facade to the story. So I highly recommend that book. So going on to the books I actually own. <laughs> Again, these are in absolutely no order, they're just the ones I pulled off my shelf. First one is Starbringer by Tracy Wolf and Nina Croft. I felt this one kind of came out with very little praise, but I think it happened to come out about the same time as Fourth Wing, and it just got swept up in the gulf that was Fourth Wing. But uh, this one follows um, a group of people who live, it's very actually very similar to um, Firefly. If you like Firefly, you'd probably really enjoy this. It's a group of people who live in this world where all the plants have been taken under, that all the plants are able to continue existing because it's kind of, futuristic and many planets are uninhabitable have been taken under a wing where they all speak the same common language they have the same common ruling families and there's some mysticism so there's some people that follow a particular religion there's some people that follow politics and they a group of them for one reason or another all end up on the same ship so these nine people all end up on the spaceship and some of them are trying to get to their friends and they have there's explained why they have to be with these people some of them are trying to get back home because something happens that really separates them from their home planet and some of them are just trying to survive and they end up on the spaceship together and they have this like adventure trying to get to all the places they want to go whilst being pursued by other people and it is so good i really really enjoyed this book it's, it's just that real kind of silly sci-fi fun that I really enjoy in sci-fi. I don't really enjoy heavy, serious sci-fi. I, I like more like the Firefly side of sci-fi. And if you enjoy that too, you'd really like this one, but it does have very strong romantic elements, which I also really enjoyed. Uh, next up was a book I found kind of hard to recommend to people. It was Taylor... No, it wasn't. Why did I say Taylor Swift? Because it's purple. Um, the next one I really liked was Kira Cass's A Thousand Heartbeats. Um, this book follows a girl who was her country's princess. And they have been in a hundred plus year long argument with another country and this other country believes that they own the territory this country lands on sorry lives on the they believe they own all the territory of the land um it's very much like an old-fashioned disney fairy story it's not something i could recommend to everybody because it is kind of slow it is meandering it has a very dreamy quality to it there isn't really a huge amount that happens this book really reminded me of the kind of movies my nan and granddad would have liked very gentle romantic fantasy movies where there isn't really that much peril there isn't really that much danger but you kind of get swept up in this story of these princesses and the big dresses and heroes coming to save them and things it just felt like it came from a different time and that's why i enjoyed it so much it's definitely a book i see myself coming back to many times in the future because i just enjoyed the dreamy escapism of the book again it's not one i could recommend to everybody but i just had the most wonderful time reading it and the world is so terrible and so many bad things happening sometimes you just want a lovely little escape to a magical kingdom and that's what this book provided on the very opposite end of that spectrum is The Only One Left by Riley Sager. I read this book in one night. It is, how long is it? It's over 350 pages, but it just read so fast. I enjoy Riley Sager. I don't like everything he writes because I don't like books with like the um, ghost element to it. They're not my favourites. But this one is about a very isolated house that's on the very edge of a cliff. It's kind of represented on the cover. And it's set in the 1980s. And this girl has, something has happened in her past that makes it very difficult to have to be employed as what's well, essentially a CNA and or a HCO if you're in the UK and um, she is employed as like a one last offer to see how she does to go to this house because basically nobody else wants the job years ago in this house there was a murder where all of the family apart from one person was killed and that lady now lives in the house she's no, she's no longer verbal and um, she has like a degenerative kind of condition that's left her unable to speak, move, and they believe she was the one who killed her entire family. 
but she was never prosecuted for it. Basically, it's a story of Lizzie Borden kind of retold. And she starts the girl, I think her name's Kit. Is her name Kit? Yes, so the original ha uh, the Hope family murders happened in 1929 and Kit goes back in 1983 as a home health aide. And Kit starts getting messages on a typewriter from Lenora, who's now non-verbal, to communicating what actually happened that night. And she cannot leave. R Rally Sager does these um, situations so well where these people get stuck in and they cannot leave the building because it's her last chance of a job or she needs the job to survive she has to stay and that's what makes thrillers really good because a lot of the time with thrillers you're like well just leave and then you solve all of your problems um, but in Rice Sager's books you often can't and this is a perfect example of it but I can't really tell you too much more without giving out the plot but I really really enjoyed it and I highly highly recommend this book I'm so excited for his new release next year he writes really fast and the next pick is another fantasy story, and that is King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. I wasn't the biggest fan of Six of Crows, but I enjoyed the original Geisha trilogy, and Gesh, Gesh, Grisha, Geisha, Grisha trilogy, and um, I absolutely love the TV show, so I wanted to pick this up to see if I enjoyed it, and I really, really enjoyed it. This follows some of the characters from the original Grisha trilogy with some pop-ins from the Six of Crows trilogy. Basically, we're following Nikolai, who has a dark secret he wants to keep from everyone else, Zoya, who is ruling alongside him, and the two of them are just trying to hold the Grishaverse together with whatever they can. There's arranged marriages, there's people pretending to be other people, there's magic, um, they have a type of magic in the Grisha world where they can change the way you look. There's so many things happening and it, it, I just absolutely love this book. It's one that's very hard to explain unless you've read the rest of the books in the world, but if you do read these books, I would highly recommend it. I just absolutely loved it. It was so fast paced for such a thick fantasy that um, every everybody in it was felt like true characters. I didn't love the second one in the duology as much, but this one I just absolutely loved the world and I was so glad to be back there and I really, really enjoyed it. Next up we have um, Things We Hide From The Light. I'm mostly not sure if I preferred Things We Hide From The Light or Things We Never Go Over More, but they're both by Lucy Score and they're both in the Knockamout world. I think this one was my favourite of the two. So we have this um, town where in the first book this girl leaves on her wedding day and goes to rescue her twin sister and finds out her twin sister has actually abandoned her there with her daughter. And the first book is about her settling into the world, raising this niece of hers that she didn't even know existed, and we meet some side characters. And this book follows some of the side characters. It follows a... It follows the brother of the lead in the first book, who is the head of the local police department, and a girl who has kind of come in and out of the world. I think he, she originally dated his younger brother, who was the main character in the first series, but it was a long time ago and everyone's fine with it. And it follows their romance. You would think a romance book this thick felt slow, but it, every page felt like it needed to be there. And there's so many other worlds. It's such a fleshed out world that, especially after the first book, that, okay, baby, what is wrong? That you... Um, really feel like you know these characters and they're very three-dimensional characters in the same way that I felt with um, the Alaskan Wild series by Kei Tucker. So if you rec if you like that series, I like this one as well. There's comedic elements, there's heavy elements, there's romance, there's recovering from trauma because of what happened to the male lead in the first book um, and the events of the first book. You definitely have to read the series. I think I just really like the series. So I really recommend this ser as a romance series and you know, I don't be put off by the size because they do go really quick but I, I really enjoyed this. Uh, next up is A Mystery and this is on Her Majesty Frightfully Secret Service by Reese Bowen. I really, really enjoyed this series. It is a series about a girl who's very distantly in line for the royal throne. I think at the very beginning she's 12, but she slowly gets knocked further and further down. And she meets in the first book, um, this is book number 11 or 12. It might be further along than that. Oh, she's 35th in line now. Goodness me, she's getting knocked down. I can't remember how far into the series this is, but um, you have to read them. You kind of have to read them in order. You could just drop in now, but I think it would make a lot more sense. In the very early book, she meets an Irish man called Darcy Amara, and they have an on and off romance all the way through. But the main issue with Georgie is because she's so far down in line and she hasn't married yet, she is absolutely broke. And her mum was a stage actress who has a very normal family but likes to pretend otherwise. And her dad was a duke. So she comes from like two different worlds and she drops into both constantly and she's able to thrive in both. So she is assigned by the Queen to solve mysteries and follow people. And a lot of this has to do with um, Wallace Simpson, if you're aware of that story. Um, she pops up along through all the books as well. Uh, in this book, she's down in Italy to attend a house party on the request of the Queen to spy on some events that are taking place. But also, she's there to see her friend Belinda, who I won't give away what's happened to Belinda. You kind of have to read the books to know Belinda's story. Belinda is a bit of like a girl about town and wants to be a fashion designer and is a very fun character. But something's happened to her, so she's also in Italy. So she sees the opportunity to have some free food and board and also spend time with her friend and help the Queen out, because she can't really say no to the Queen. And the adventures of this book ensue. And it was a really good mystery about who kills someone at a house 
house party. It's rare with a long running series the books keep getting better, but this is one of those ones that I genuinely believe every time I read one of the books it's better than the last one. And this has been my favourite instalment so far. I really, really enjoyed it. And then finally I have Cassandra Clare's um, Sword Catcher, which is her adult fantasy debut to come out this year. I've done a whole video on this book, so I'm not I'd nobody will be surprised it was in my favourites of the year, but I really enjoyed this fantasy world. Basically it's a world where there's two cities existing within one. One is the city that Kel has been recruited into. So he was born into an orphanage, he grew up very poor, and he was recruited to be the king's double. And he has some magic that makes him look just, sorry, the prince's double, that makes him just, just like the prince. And they have always spent every waking moment together. Always. And the prince, um, if anything ever happened to the prince, he would have to take the sword, the bullet, what not bullet, wrong time period. Whatever attempt was made on the king's life would have to go via Kel, and, and hopefully Kel would be killed off. But he also appears in some places instead of the prince. But people don't really know Kel exists either. They know he has the think of him as a royal cousin. He appears sometimes alongside the prince, but he can appear as the prince when needed, when threats are experienced, where its threats are expected on the prince's life. So it follows his life as not really being a whole person. He just kind of represents somebody else. His life is very like expendable. So he has to come to terms with that. And then there's another girl who's a secondary character and she is a female in um, a lower class of people, um, a second, second rate kind of people within this world. But they need these people because they have certain magic and certain healing elements that the main people need and their paths cross in this world. But the reason it's kind of two worlds and the reason this book has like two cities on is there's this whole undercity run by a person called the Rad Picker King who starts to need Kel for some of his schemes and recruits him to kind of work for him because he believes there are bigger threats in place that he should be helping with. And there are so many things happening in this book so I can't explain all of them but if you would like a new fantasy world to dive into that's very rich and very real... Um, that is adults, so there is some sort of sexual content but there's very low on violence I think you'd really enjoy this book, I really enjoyed this book and I'm very excited for the next one, so they are my favourite books of the year, please let me know if there's any of these that you've read any of the books based on how much I like these that you would recommend, please comment below what your favourite book this year so far was, or if you had any big disappointments that you weren't so excited about, I am aware everybody else will play a fourth wing on there favourites. I enjoyed Fourth Wing. Um, I read it twice because the first time I listened to an audiobook and I didn't like the audiobook very much but it reads much better but I wouldn't say that was a favourite but I think that's going to be a lot of people's favourite book of the year. Did you read that one? Did you like it? Please let me know. Again there'll be no video next week because I am away and I'll see you again in the new year with a new TBR. If you celebrate Christmas have a wonderful Christmas. If you don't whatever you celebrate have a lovely time and if you do absolutely nothing I hope you have a great time until I see you again. Bye. See you bye Sherlock. of the year everywhere on tv couples and christmas trees gifts wrapping and cheer just the worst time to be with someone special